Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to show you how to thread a Burnett 134DL. This is a fairly generic sort of serger or um, you know as we call them here in New Zealand we call them overlockers. Uh, so you know first of all of course you want to start by you know making sure that the thread mast is lined up. I've gone through this in uh, previous videos and sort of preparation to threading uh, you need to make sure that the thread mast is lined up so effectively the top of these pins here line up with the the loops here. So the trick is to um, have the, the little ball lined up here when you extend the mast there's two sections to the mast too by the way there's the top section here and there's the lower section here now both sections have this little ball locator. Let's have a close look here. You can see the little ball there sticking through the hole. And if I turn the mast or move it up and down, you can see that the ball isn't located. So the trick is to raise the mast for that section to its full height and then just turn until the ball pops into the hole there. And that also goes for the top section as well. So just extend the top section there like that and twist the top section so that the ball pops into its little locator and then you can do the same with the other one. So if I just um, tip the machine just for a better look here when the mast is fully extended and the little balls are located into their locators there. You can see there that the thread mast is lining up so the tops of these spool holders line up with the loops here. So that's the first thing to, to do there. Now with the... I'll just drop that down to make this easier for you to see. Now I'm just going to thread with these 1000 meter cops of thread here. Turn the machine around here, pop the threads on there and lie the thread over so that they come from back to front through those hoops there. Just like that. So all four there. We'll turn the machine back around. Now I'll raise the mast there just to its full extent. Line up the little locators. So the first thing to do is to thread through the uh, this top bar here, and you'll notice there's actually eight holes here. So we've got two holes per thread. Uh, that's supposed to be like a kind of a maroni colour, but this is faded slightly. That's a blue, green, and that's supposed to be yellow. So what you do is you bring your thread down and go straight down the left hole. So of each pair, so that's the lower looper pair, upper looper pair, right needle pair, and the left needle pair. So you go through down through the left of the pair, over, so back up above the bar again, around the front, and then back down the right hand hole of the pair. So that loops around like that. So I'll get you a closer look here on the, this is for the upper looper. So bring your thread straight down through the left hand hole of the pair, uh, around the front and up, and then back down the right hand hole. So you should end up with that sort of scenario there. And we do that for the remaining two. These are the needles. It doesn't really matter what order you do this in. like so. We start by threading either of the loopers. Normally the top looper is the recommended looper to thread so that's the the blue one here comes down to this tension dial. I've decided to change over to a contrasting colour thread there so this is a navy blue just might show a little bit better on the white background here. So we're threading the upper looper this is the blue here now some of the colours of these dots may not come through very well on the camera um, 
uh, because they're faded. So we're using the second thread in from the right here. That's this thread here. This one here is the lower looper. So we'll just come straight down to the first loop here. Just straight in through the little slit here and bring the thread to the left and that hooks it into a little one-way guide. And then we head down to the tensioner and it's quite a good idea just to hold hold the thread before the tensioner and pull the thread up like that so that the thread fully pulls into the tensioner disc and also uh, the thread will hook over a little guide on the left hand side of this tensioner dial here. You can see that if it wasn't hooked around this tensioner properly you would thread in like that and then possibly accidentally come straight down like that and you'll see there that the you know the threads actually popped out from the tensioner there so just make sure that this comes right in like that so that when you pull down to the next guide there you can see that it's actually staying in the tensioner there so that's that's quite important and so we're just following along with the blue here oh, I forgot to mention also that the um, door here is just thumb on the right hand side there in this little divot here push to the right and open the door out like that and in behind here there's the handy threading diagram it just makes it a bit easier and it actually shows in the threading diagram the, the route that the thread's taking. It shows it here actually um, so the dotted line there is where the thread is going in behind the tension disc and you can see it goes around and then up and over the guide there and then comes back down to the first uh, guide down here. So you can see that it's present on all of the tension discs. The next guide is done there and then we just move to the left slightly here and come up into this little one-way hook from below pull it up like that and then just over that guide here over this guide here and uh, by the way although I'm threading in a dark color here uh, just just for a little bit of contrast it's actually easier uh, when you're doing this yourself to thread in white because you can see see what you're doing you know if you and then if you if you don't want to stick with white well then you can tie uh, the color thread on that you want to use and pull that thread through so in the diagram here we're at this point here and then it shows it just goes straight through the top looper eye so I'll turn the machine to get the top looper down there just to make it a bit easier to get to and then just thread front to back through the top looper eye and then I find it quite handy just to come in with my tweezers from behind pick up that thread and then that makes it easy just to pull it here out the back and I just come out on an angle so that it's under the back of the presser foot there so that's the top looper done now the bottom looper is down from the guide here into this little slot and pull from right to left just hooks in like that and then come down and around the lower tensioner there hold back here clamp the thread here and then pull the thread up like that and then let it come down and it should automatically pull over the little thread guide in there if we take a look at the threading diagram here, we've come around the tensioner disc over the little guide there, and then down to the first guide here. Now that's this one. That's this guide. Literally just come from right to left into that guide like that. And then if we have a look back at the threading diagram, we've done this guide here. We come up to a, a bar up here which also the blue thread has come through and that's this guide here you can see the little red dot here 
So blue blue dot for the upper looper, red dot lower looper here. So we just come through like that. We're at this point here on the diagram and the next loop is this one here which just happens to be, we'll just turn the machine to get that into view there, this little loop here and that again is just take the thread under and pull up and it'll hook in like that and then the next one is another little loop on the actual lower looper carrier bar there and that's this one here and again it's a, it's a hook in from underneath and pull up and that's a one way loop thread can't come back out of there and then on this particular model we have a, a lever around the side here and that drops this little plate away here this little cover and that way we can get in to the left hand side here and what we can do there is we can reach through with a good long pair of tweezers and pick up the thread from the last threading loop there just bring it through to this side and then turn the machine to bring this looper here back to its very left hand of its travel and you can do this looking from the front I'm just uh, I've got the camera coming in from the side here to make it easy to see so we just turn the machine there to bring the looper back to its left most position there You'll see in the top here, there's a slot here. And that is where the thread, if we come around the back of the looper and lie the thread across, down into that slot like that, you'll see there that the thread sits in this little hole here in the left-hand side of the looper there, like that. So. That little slot there is for just to make things easier to thread there, like that. So once I have this uh, left uh, looper eye threaded, now we want to thread the right hand looper eye that's on the point of the looper. I find it quite handy just to um, poke this thread through uh, to the. Oops, just put that back over there to the right hand side here so that we can pick it up from the right okay so when we turn the machine to get to the right hand looper eye we can um, just retrieve the thread there and then turn the machine to bring the looper into a position that's going to make it easy to thread like so and so we're ready to thread the looper eye now and I'll just get you a closer look here I'll try and do this without getting my hands in the way just start by threading through the looper eye there and then come in quite handy just like the top looper come in from behind and grab that thread and pull it up and out behind the foot just like we did with the upper looper thread and you can just check that that pulls through smoothly check that it's not catching on anything and it's quite a good idea to just double check your threading when you do pull it through make sure everything is in order that's all looking good there so now we can start doing the needles. We'll start with the right needle here. That's the green. Same thing. Pull that like that. And while we're here, I might as well do the left needle. I find quite often you can do both needles fairly much at the same time. So we'll just pull that around like that. And then we come down from the... Uh, thread tensioners down to these loops here so we've got the left needle in the top loop right needle in the bottom loop just pull like that 
pull the threads up and that stops them from coming out. That, that's the right needle there, left needle, so we've got left needle, right needle. And the next bit is quite easy, you can do both threads at the same time. It pays to keep track of which is which though. So just lay the thread, this is the left needle, down like so. Same with the right needle, like that. And then we come down through the two loops here. So you've got a right and a left. So right needle just go in between the guide there and pull the right needle to the right and the left needle thread to the left. And we're nearly there. It's just a matter of turning the machine so that you get the needles in a good spot there. And trim off the threads there. And then we can thread so we go in behind the guide here one there, two there like that so I'll show you that again so just come in from the left hand side to this guide above the needles right hand, left hand just like that and then we just thread back, uh, front to back through the needles and it's also a good idea to take them down under the foot there so that all the threads are going down under the presser foot under the rear of the presser foot just like that closing up the covers like that pop that cover closed like that and it should just latch back to the left hand side and now we should be ready to try some chaining out there and get some overlocking done let's see how we go I'm just gonna it's, it's quite a good idea just to turn the machine manually for the first few stitches just to make sure everything's in order and that nothing's jamming and that looks okay looking fine all nice there so th you know that that's a more traditional type machine um, if, if you've seen my video or oh, was two or three videos back I show the a jet air threader for the baby lock machine and that, that's just to make um, threading easier really and um, but the, I don't think this one's too bad and in fact if you've seen that video I did a speed run so that was the fastest um, I could uh, thread that machine and I think I, I took three attempts and it took about two minutes was about my fastest time so I think uh, this warrants a speed threading um, speed run uh, you know uh, I'm ju I just would like to compare you know the speed difference between threading a an overlocker a traditional type overlocker like this one or serger as opposed to the fancy uh, jet air threader of the baby lock and just see how much time uh, it actually takes to thread one of these so I'll do a uh, speed run on this one and again I'll um, I'll do you know what I uh, what I call it a Le Mans start where you know I'll make sure that none of the threads are on the actual cone holders so we're starting uh, from scratch here just a bit of fun see how fast I can thread this little beastie Thread stands down. We don't have any threads on, so this is the old Le Mans start. Run like running for your vehicle. <laughs> they used to do them in the 60s, didn't they? Where the drivers would run, uh, you know, the, from the uh, from the side of the track and jump into their cars, get them started, and then take off. Uh, unlike you know the likes of um, uh, Formula One, where they're sitting ready to go and just plant their boot. So this, this is uh, a Le Mans start threading style. 
Um, so here we go. Yeah, last time was uh, two minutes and two seconds. So that's uh, that's time to beat. But that's that's a baby lock um, jet air threader. So you know, I don't know if I'll beat that. But let's let's see how we go. I'm not sure how many attempts this will take, but let's go. A bit of time there. Jet air threading system's not looking so flash, is it now? No, it's it's a pretty amazing system, our old jet air threader. But this isn't too bad, you know. I think. I don't think I'm going to be too far away from that time unless I make a huge mistake. Already had a bit of a slip up there. Thirteen, so it is slower, but you know. I always get a little bit shaky when I do this. three minutes and six it was so it's about a minute longer about a minute longer than the fancy jet air threader of the baby lock just for this bog standard burnet traditional serger there we go tension's a little bit out there I shall sort that. But um, yeah, not too bad. Not too bad at all. Quite easy to thread, I think. So um, I hope you uh, found that helpful, and I thank you very much for watching. <laughs>